Another form of men's like learned helplessness is around women's O's. One of my mutuals has been making this awesome playlist about men's learned helplessness um, and how, you know, pa patriarchy makes it so that their, their entitlement and just having like the easy lane to things um, makes it so that they not only just like become passive in their own lives, um, which then is like laziness, but um, they don't problem solve. They don't like take charge of any of their problem. It always falls on a woman, on a women, women. And so one of my, um, one of my comedy friends, um, he's pretty big now. And he did a set, um, that I saw on Instagram and it was hard. He was talking about, and he's great. I think he's a great comedian. And he does this whole set about how, you know, uh, that, you know, Schmegs Ed in the U S at least it's all about, he calls it consequence Ed. And he talks about how, you know, they just focus on the consequence, pregnancy, but especially STIs and everything. And none of it is about schmegs and especially none of it is about, you know, women's pleasure and how, you know, it's like really like, it's like playing where's Waldo, but like not even, not telling men where Waldo is, what Waldo looks like, or even that they should be on a quest to find Waldo. Like they don't even mention Waldo. And it's a really funny bit. And I like where he's going with this, but he, as a woman who didn't have my first real like, pfft, oh, until I was 36. So I have a lot of justifiable anger around that. And I know women who still, I know like they, they're in my comments on videos. Some of them are in their forties. So, I, and I guarantee you our grandmas and a lot of our own mothers still don't know what it feels like unless they have like a little battery operated or plug-in device because these men are just never learned because they don't care. They don't care. That's what it comes down to. So people are shocked when I say that it was 36 when I heard my first mind-blowing thing because I was finally with a man who, who well, first of all, I, I was relaxed uh, and not like afraid of this man, although I should have been because he was the one who ended up abusing me. By the way, abusers are usually really good at eating this. And this is like, this is a double-edged sword. If he's really, really good in bed, a lot of times it's because he's a hobo schedule and he's going to climatize you and like, you're going to like make the worst decisions of your life because he's so good at that, at eating that, right? Uh, so be careful if they're really good at it. Uh, and, but most men, at least in the U.S., just suck. They suck in bed. And women have done have to do the emotional labor of like either pretending like we like this or faking it. And before you come in my comments and be like, stop faking it. Like, of course. Yeah. Let's all, let's all stop faking it. But I tell me, tell me that there are never reasons why you should. One, uh, a lot of men can't handle just women just doing nothing and being like, yeah, I got nothing from that. We don't want to die. We don't want them to assault us. And grape us after not giving us an O. We don't want them to like cut our heads off. So yeah, we'll just like whatever. Like the same way we smile for them. We'll <laughs> whatever, right? I mean, they're so used to corn at this point. That, that That's what they think that we all sound like anyway. And they're so used to men doing literally nothing that seems the least bit pleasurable. And all is just literally violence and choking and slapping and like that's and then we're supposed to be like <laughs> from that that's another conversation but uh yeah of course we should stop faking but also sometimes there is a time and a reason there's a there's a time and a place to fake and there's a reason why women do it so they shouldn't be shamed into doing it one is sometimes it's painful because this man didn't take any time to like get her riled up and so she's faking it so he'll stop so it'll end, right? Uh, or because she loves him and thinks that, you know, he can't handle the truth, so she's gonna do this, uh, whatever. Anyway, codependency, all this is right, it's very complicated. But uh, I'm shocked by how many people are shocked that I was 36 until I had my first real one. I didn't say like, like I've had like, you know, some pleasure here and there, but not like, oh my God, my, 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 my blood is made of uh, warm glitter and I'm levitating off this, uh, like I'm not even a, um, like out of body experience. Don't be shocked by that. I can't tell you how, how few women have actually experienced that. They just won't admit it. Okay. 
So that's for starters. And if and if any women come in my comments, mean you women should be a shut up. If you, if you're not a survivor of childhood essay, shut up. Like, don't, don't shame women who don't know how to advocate for themselves in the bedroom. It's very hard to do. It's honestly like the hardest place, I would argue, for a lot of women, especially if you've experienced um, grape, which, huh, which of us haven't at some point, or some coercion, which all of us have. I mean, any man who's lying to you to get you in bed, that's coercion. But unless you have been, you know, there's, the, there's a spectrum of grape, right? But uh, if you have from childhood, and especially from a family member, then like you like just just stop. Don't say anything. You don't understand how hard it is for a woman to take ownership of her body when she was taught from 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 a very young age from a family member that it's not hers. She's not entitled to her own pleasure because this isn't even hers. It's his. It's all theirs. It's just because I always get that in my comments when I make these videos. So first of all, we have like a serious O oh, gap. And I don't even think women realize how big the O gap is because they think, oh, like a lot. I thought I'd had like an O. No, there's different kinds of O's, but like the wow, like that took a lot of work, which men are lazy. They don't want to work. It's so funny to me that they call us lazy because they were literally the laziest people I've ever met in my life. And the more privileged they have, the lazier. <laughs> Unless they have a lot of trauma and then they like to beat themselves up. Because that makes them feel good. Because they hate themselves, but are entitled and uh, whatever. So this comedian goes on to talk about how <sighs> that it, he was shocked to find out that he didn't know what he was doing. And so his whole bit, and again, like, I love this guy. I get, you know, we took improv class together. He's very talented. I'm glad he's doing really well. Um, and he talks a lot about... Uh, you know, just, he's not your typical, like, tough guy. I just, I love the way he is, you know, kind of talking about feminist issues in just such a great way. And because he's a man, he still doesn't understand he's missing one piece of that. Um, and, you know, but that's okay. You know, he hasn't been studying feminism the way I have and, or living under the oppression of men. So I can understand while well, he still has some stuff to learn. And so he talks about how men um, don't realize they're bad in bed until one woman they date is like, yeah, no, this is not working for me. And then, you know, teaches them. And how, you know, he was making fun of himself for how the, when he finally realized that he was like, wait, what do you mean? There's no way the, those two other women could be wrong. So he's making fun of himself, right? About how, God, how silly. And how this one woman taught him that he didn't know at all what he's doing. And then when he's like, wow, this is actually fun. Like, this is a whole different experience when a woman is actually enjoying this. You know, like, and she, they, they, like, they, it's like, it's a different world. And there's Waldo, right? And it's a great joke. And the point of the joke is that women have to teach men how to give us orgasm. And that's the part. While it's true, you should feel bad about that. Men should feel bad that women have to teach you because um, I promise you for any woman who unfortunately is attracted to men and dates men, I would be willing to bet if I took a poll right now and let me know if you know what I'm talking about, although I don't know if anybody would want to comment on this publicly. Every woman that I know has like Googled how to give BJs, how to do this, how to please your man, da 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 I mean, I'm just being the curious journalist person that I am. You know, immediately, quick Google, endless article about how to please men. Why do you think there's so many articles about that? Because women will read those. That's advertising dollars. That, that's click, click, women will, those articles will get clicked on. Because so many women want to keep their man. They want to please their man. Partly because they, they want to. They want to give. They want... But, but they are expected to. And if they don't know how to, they're going to read about it. They're going to educate themselves because that's what we do. When we have a problem as women, we, you know, like Tina Fey, I think Tina Fey's one is like, workers get stuff done. When we don't know how to do something, we learn. We teach ourselves. We get to action. Why? Because we have had to figure out everything ourselves. We do not have the privilege of learned helplessness. Other than uh, when we're traumatized and all that stuff. Yeah, I'm not, I, I actually do have learned helplessness around certain things. Uh, my taxes. 
I need help, by the way. It's not that we don't have that entitlement of men. One of the things that has become painfully clear to me in the last few years, especially because I've just, I've learned because of like social media, especially TikTok and YouTube and following so many of my mutuals. One of the things that has become, become painfully clear to me is how much time men have and how much they waste and how uh, for women time is it's a it's a privilege and the more marginalized you are the less time you have so when you're poor when you're a woman if you're a poor woman a poor woman who is from another uh, marginalized identity right if you're d disabled um, if you're black, indigenous, another woman of color, then whatever I'm saying is probably times 10, especially if you're a black woman, because we know that they are historically in the U.S. I'm going to speak because I know that history, the most exploited. Um, like the more you're discriminated against, the less time you're going to have because because of all every life is going to be that much more difficult. But then on top of that, you have all this time you spent you spend fighting the system for change. And that in of itself is a job. And I've mentioned this before. You know, I just, like the, the more time I spend, you know, uh, marching and, and protest, you know, whatever, all the t fighting for change. And then I see men just not doing any of that. I'm just like, I get so angry. I'm like, it must be so nice to have all that spare time. Right. And then as a white woman, I don't even I, I'm I don't have to spend an enormous amount of my time surviving the police, surviving uh, just systemic racism. And all of the things that come with that, that are nothing but time sucked. Um, and, you know, and I'm, I know white people do this too, but the amount of time that men waste of hours trying to argue with us, which is why I don't give them my time. I will not argue with men anymore. I won't. I don't, because they're not going to believe me. It is a waste of my time. I will not argue with them. Block. <laughs> Block. I have started to really understand how precious my time is and my spare time especially, and I will not give it away uh, to men anymore, unnecessarily. I'm not teaching them anything, especially men who don't really want to learn. They're just playing devil's advocate, you know? I'm not, te I'm not teaching. I'm not teaching. I'm a, I come from a line of teachers. I was a teacher. I'm done. I'm done. I have so much better things. I want to enjoy my life. I don't want to teach men anymore. I love teaching, but men are terrible students, so I'm not doing it anymore. But when I think about even, even having to read articles about how to give BJs, how to do this, how to do that, how to please, like that's so much time. You know, uh, this morning I had to spend some time dyeing my hair because if I don't, there's a consequence for that. I look like a skunk and I get endless comments. So I dye my hair, right? Like, yeah, like I, I don't even put all the time and, and energy. I don't do makeup. That would be a whole nother time and money thing, right? Like there's so many things that women have to do that w that spend so much time and our time is valuable. Our time is priceless. We can never get our time back. So if there's one thing I really want women to do is really be aware of your time and how you're using it and stop giving it to men for free. We already have to do so many things to survive patriarchy in terms of our time. So men don't get, they shouldn't get any more of it unless they're, unless you get something in return. Unless it is an equal exchange and you are benefiting from this. Man no, no more. And so the fact that, you know, and some people call it weaponizing confidence because I'm sure there are men who know how to give O's and just pretend like they don't because they're lazy. I absolutely have no doubt that that exists. But a lot of men are not good in bed and they don't care enough to change that because changing that would require asking for help, right? Asking their partner, can you show me? Does you like this? Oh, but then they won't look like a man. And God forbid that their fragile little ego is threatened. Nope, can't do that. They got to pretend like a know-it-all. And then I, you know, I have to co-sign this lie. that they, No, no more co-signing that lie. Uh, they may have to read some articles, but men don't read stuff that been, that, that, that's about other people, right? That's why all these relationship books, you really think men are going to read those? You know, how many, you know how many women have bought the book Fair Play and then just watched it sit there? You know, do you know how many women have like trying to save their relationships and, and, you know, I can't, I know, I know women who are like, yeah, bought the book, read the book, highlighted the book, bought him a copy of the book. He never read it. 
He has more time than she will ever have, but he doesn't have time for that because men just do what they want, right? They have an abundance of time and women have so little time and yet we still will give time to, to, to men and, and our relationship with men. And then for, so for a man to not even, like, of course he's not going to read an article on how to please women. Why would he? He has to memorize statistics about baseball teams. He has to study gear to see which, which carabiner is new and which, you know, uh, which new rope or harness is best for his next climb. Because everything's about him. He can spend hours studying fantasy football statistics. The amount of time men will give to things that, that, they, that bring them pleasure, it's all about them. They have endless time, endless time to consume TV, to play games, to just literally do whatever they want. And, and this is even men who work very hard, right? And then men who don't work very hard, it's even worse, as you can imagine. Endless time to improve themselves, to learn something, to help out at home, to do whatever to read on how to do, you know, how to better themselves or better their relationship or better their life or give, give back to the community, volunteer, right? I can't tell you how many women I have heard who are just devastated that men will not take the time to save their marriage, take the time to go to therapy. They have to be pushed into these things. Women have to beg, they have to cry. They have to do all these things. And so why on earth would men give a crap about women's orgasms if they won't even, I don't know, save themselves or save the, you know, like, so that it's like that joke, he was so close. And again, I mean, I, I really appreciate this comedian. Um, and he's one of the few men in, in the comedy world. There's a few that I'm friends with. There's very, one of the few that I wasn't like, you are sketchy. You need to go heal some trauma. You clearly hate women, but pretend like you don't. You're feminism, feminist on stage. But, uh, I seriously, you probably, you know, beat your girlfriend. Like there's like very few male comedians that I will get anywhere near with or anywhere near, especially alone with, because so many of them are just so broken because they think that they are healing by talking about stuff on stage and joking about stuff on stage rather than actually addressing them and feeling and processing. Oh, I'll just tell, cause I used to do that. I'll just tell the story about being a graped. <laughs> I can make it funny. I can teach a lesson through it, but that's still, I, you know, that I really didn't heal from. Creativity can, can give some healing. There's no doubt about it. That's why one of the reasons why I do it. But that alone, just talking about something crazy that happened to you, that's not healing. That in itself alone is not enough work. So there's very few comedians who do <laughs> work that I give a crap about. Like you saw in my last video last week about comedians. Uh, most of them are exploiting women at the very best. Um, worst case scenario, they're literally just monsters and terrifying men. And so even some of the most progressive men who think they're one of the good ones. Uh, I need those men to understand. I promise you, you are still expecting women to do things for you. Like, you're still missing the point. You're this close. But why didn't you take the time to learn how to give an O on your own? Why did you have to be taught that? Why do women have to teach you that? Why do women have to teach men everything? And again, because my mutual, I'm gonna tag her. And this, but it's this learn helplessness thing. When, when you are literally taught that you are the best and that half of the population is literally here to serve you and to make you amazing and, 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 and their bodies and their emotional labor and like the, everything is for you, why on earth would you think that you have to do anything to better yourself? Because she'll better it for you. She'll do it all for you. She'll do it all for you. And so men become so passive in their lives because there's always a woman who's going to pick up his slack. Always. There's always one. If it's not their wife or girlfriend, it's going to be their sister, their mother, even their guy friends' wives. Who knows? Their, the, their friends that are female. And men have been relying on us to do things for them because life has been so easy for them in so many ways. The fact that they can literally just survive without feeling like they're going to be killed in of itself makes their life infinitely easier. They don't have the time to read an article about an O.